there, folks. Welcome to the lobby. I'm your host, Chris Waters. Eric Tay's on the couch. Some other guys here, too. And we've got a great show for you here uh, today. We've got uh, Counter Spy coming up a little later. John and David are here from Dynamite, and we're giving away some codes for that game on the PS4. So that's coming up in a bit. Metro Redux with Kevin Van Ord talking about Bloodborne as well. But the aforementioned Eric Tay is here to show off his max level Diablo 3 <laughs> evil character thing. Eric's Ultimate <laughs> Evil Edition. Come on, guys. Eric Tay is here to, to uh, you know, actually give back something to the workplace that he's basically spent the past couple of days just playing his goddamn just video Just sinking it way into Diablo. Danny yeah. O'Dwyer, it's great to have you back here, buddy. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, let's Thank give you. the folks at home a little explanation. Are you... You, you're on the couch. Oh man, I'm, I'm so jealous. <laughs> he's so jet lagged. <laughs> so I'm keeping it together. Yeah. I'm gonna glue it together until you uh, you're you're all good yeah, next week. Mixing it up. There's nothing, nothing wrong with mixing it up. Yeah, I've I've spent for those who don't know, I've spent the past couple of weeks in Europe. Uh, the last of which was at Gamescom, of course. Common it uh, up. We saw some. Yeah, that's where all the communists go to play video games. That's, it's wow. great. I know, Everything they, there they, is equal. Yeah, and it's wonderful though that since they took down the Iron Curtain, it hasn't stopped that conference from going from strength to strength. Uh, there's like 300,000 people uh, turn up at that thing. It is absolutely insane. And this is the first year I didn't even go get to the show floor at all. We were so busy in the the, the sort of the business area. In the nicely air cooled business area, yeah, not teeming you. with the hordes of humanity. It's insane how many people go there. Ask me what my favorite game was. Danny, what was your favorite game at Gamescom? You know that Ori and the Blind Forest game? Yes. I was so apathetic about that when I saw the E3 trailer. I was like, great, it looks really pretty. It'll probably be a really like mechanically basic game that's going to rest on its like prettiness. Prettiness. It's great. It's pretty neat, right? It's really good. Uh, you're very nimble and quick yes. as the main character, which you kind of, you're sort of paired with Ori, who's this big kind of hulking yeah. creature. Who you, it, so I, when I first saw it at E3, it wasn't like, I was that sensation was not one I associated with it. Totally. But you are like, Flitting through the forest, it's really it's, neat. and it looks hard as hell. So that you remember, did you see the video of the the water like exploding through the tree and no. Ori or whatever the name of the actual character is called? I, I, I did not. I don't know. Character, video game character person uh, is like flying around. It looked like incredibly hard. I was like, there's no way they did that live. And then the guy when we had our presentation did it live, and it was like inches to death. Oh really? Looks really good. Yeah. So like speed running, really tricky levels. It's it's way different to what I thought it would. Ori in the Blind Forest. Really good. All Far Cry right. Forest Rad too. Far Cry 4, also yep. red. Yeah. Gamescom highlights. Shoot bears. Daniel I saw you Dwyer. throwing them, them hearts or meat chunks to get yeah, the leopards just throw to like, attack people. And if there's no leopard or like <laughs> animal there, they just spawn it somewhere. You so just have a, a meat pouch at yeah. all times. And you're it's just not like the rocks where you don't meat. <laughs> <making> <laughs> rain meat. It's not like the rocks where you run out of them or where you can't. Okay. You can run out of them. Uh, but when you're skinning people, you're also getting the meat. And yeah, like animals. If you, yeah. you throw mean skinning animals. Skinning animals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although. Far Cry 4 didn't. Did, I skinned mm. the bear, mm. or Sean skilled, skinned the bear, and then he and got like the bear meat. Inside? No, he got the bear meat and then threw it, and another bear went for it, which was kind of fucked up. Uh, but uh, it, it's yeah, Animal it, Kingdom, it, baby. it like spawns animals close to you if, if there's no animal close that would go for it. Uh -oh. And I did it in a house, and a fucking snow <laughs> leopard came out of some dude's house. <laughs> what? Like, it made no sense. <laughs> and they all turned around like, what? The fuck? Oh, but yeah. I, that sounds awesome. It was great. That sounds really yeah. enjoyable. And it's coming out this year. I cannot believe whoop that. Whoop. Do you think? Do you believe it? Do you believe it's coming out this year? Uh, uh, not going to see not like an eleventh hour let's delay. Just not play they the delay game. Yeah. We don't play that. <laughs> Ubisoft's already. If delayed. we don't speak it, it won't happen. <laughs> yeah. Look at what happened to Evolve for you. I know. Oh yeah. Had That's to bring true. that up. Tay. Jinxed it. Well, the two assassins up. are probably coming out. Well, they, they can't push those yeah, ones yeah, back. Yeah. The divisions have been pushed back, so you know it'll be the only first-person game Ubisoft for putting out this year. So. Hopefully. That's, that's coming up later once the uh, super release glut begins this fall. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition is out today? Yes. Uh, on PS4, PS3, Xbox 360, and Xbox One? Yep. Or wait, is it... It's just a, never mind. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. all yes, of yes, those. Yes. <laughs> and you've got it here, and you're dressed in like a real stylish purple getup. Is yeah. this Saints Row 4? Let me see it. Let me oh. see your dude. Oh, uh, you want to see my dude? Yeah. Oops, see wrong one. No, come on. Give me the glamour oh, shot. Oh, there it yeah. is. Yeah. Wow. So, Creepy. I mean, I guess we'll get it out of the way. Like, one of the one of the cool things, Woo! new things that you can do is <laughs> you can kind of play dress up. It's like one of the things they kind of, um, I don't know if you want to say borrow or not from stole. World of Warcraft. Stole. stole. It's the same company, though, yeah. so that's okay. You said it. All right, fine. Stole, whatever. <laughs> uh, so, let's say, for example, you have your... Helmet, right? Oops. Sure. Your Got helmet. my commander siphon. Yeah, my commander <laughs> siphon. You can go in, and depending on this is some of the stuff you get as you train up. So tiny. But um, 
You get different you options find, for like what you want your commander siphon dome to look like. Yeah, so as you find like legendaries and new items and, and whatnot, it'll add to your portfolio of things that you can change your, your uh, outfit okay. to. So look, I'm gonna make my guy look like Shredder now. Yes. Uh, so like, yeah, see Shredder. Oh, right? oh yeah, it's straight up Shredder. Sweet. Yeah. So let's right, get, go shred some things. All right, I'm gonna go shred some things. Didn't they, they get around that in the WoW thing because people who had like the best epic gear, some of it just looked like absolute ass together, so they just let you kind of yeah, tweak it a bit. Yeah, I mean. The, one of the cool things about that, though, was there were certain items you could, you couldn't like just use yeah. on anything else to make it more special. But anyways, this is a uh, this is one of the new elements in uh, this version of the Diablo game. Uh, the Halls Ultimate of Agony, Evil Edition. It's a bounty, uh, which is like a little mini quest within the world. Uh, you have an objective that you have to fill or um, complete. I have to kill Bludgeon Skull and kill a hundred monsters. Oh, I hate that guy. Uh, but skull. Yeah, what if you guys jerk. notice, uh, I have a f little fuse thing in the middle of the screen. 33 kills, 34 kills, 41 kills, 42 kills. Yeah, so that's going to keep going. It's like one of the new kind of, I, I don't want to call it a carrot on a stick, but it's kind of fun. It, it makes you try to keep killing things. Is it a score multiplier? Oh, yeah, so it gives you more EXP. Yeah, you just got 2.5 times the experience. Does that, do you, do you find, uh, now you've leveled in Diablo, many times over on the PC version mm -hmm. especially, do you find that that massacre uh, mechanic is helped you level a little faster? Uh, I definitely did in certain cases uh, because as you can see the, the EXP multiplier is pretty high. Uh, yeah. There's certain things that like a cursed chest event or something like that where I've gotten like 200 kills before uh, and that you know obviously will help you level up faster. I am trapped now. Uh, but yeah, I think it's also like a little fun mechanic that it, it's very constantly, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like just keep going. It Do you always you keep plow engaging. through this many people in these bounty um, missions? Like I usually like just, because this is not regular oh, Diablo, I feel like you're not usually up against that many low level characters, right? Um, I mean, the density has increased quite a bit since uh, this in this iteration. Yeah. Um, but bounties generally have pretty good monster density in terms of like how many monsters you're fighting. Uh, I think the heart sometimes I feel like the harder the difficulty you set it on, the more monsters there are. I don't think that's always the case. I think it's actually more area based. But uh there's always a lot of, you know, grunt kind of monsters that you can mm. kill to kind of extend your multiplier. Um, there's also another thing, so like there's these traps now. If there was stuff there, which sadly there wasn't, uh there's another oh, bonus. Yes. Oh that guy's fine. No, but <laughs> it would had to be this trap. That's oh. part of the map. Um, but yeah, if there was monsters there, you would get a trap bonus, which you don't actually get in PC, okay. which is another thing. Uh, so there's all these different little multipliers that you get um, on this console version that Who's you your boy? have in PC. Uh, that is Templar. That's uh, one of the followers that you get. Okay. Uh, is that Shea Patrick Cormac? Sure. Okay. <laughs> little Assassin's Creed Unity reference Thank there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I got you, Danny. <laughs> That's one. That's like the first nothing. of your references I've got today. <laughs> the rest of it has just been. Man, you misses. better hope Miss Dynamite doesn't turn up in this <laughs> goddamn video game. Folks, just a quick reminder right now: uh, if you have any questions for Eric about the Ultimate Evil Edition of Diablo 3, go ahead and tell them to us in the chat at Twitch.tv/GameSpot or in the comments at GameSpot.com, and I'll take a look at them and send them his way. I've already got a few lined up that I'm going to ask you in just a sec. Sure. Also want to remind you folks that we are giving away codes for Counter Spy, a game you're going to see demoed later in the show. All you need to do to be entered to win is follow GameSpot on Twitter and retweet the giveaway tweet that GameSpot just tweeted. Retweet, you said, tweet, you tweet. said the word tweet a bunch there. <laughs> yeah, it's the key to uh, the, the functioning of, of this new society we live in. <laughs> Eric, yeah, Doodle say. Legs wants to know why you're not playing a monk. Uh, because, you know, I figure you gotta switch it up every now and then. Sure. Also, uh, the last time I was here on the lobby for the PC version, mm. I played Monk, so you know, give the people something fresh to see. You wanna show people that you have range. Yeah. Yeah, you can diversify. Exactly. Speaking of which, uh, what's it like playing on the controller as opposed to mouse and keyboard? That, Says like Danny echoing Red Hat Drew's question as well as <laughs> Hyper Flood's question. Yo, that guy likes Linux. <laughs> I will say I was very skeptical the first time I played on console, even when uh, Diablo 3 came out on console, mm. but I have to say, it's actually quite fun. It works out better than you think it would. Uh, it's hard for me to explain that because it's like you have to try it yourself, but it's actually very fluid. It plays very well. I was telling Chris before we started because he was like, hey, do you think you would play this over PC? And I was like, well, I probably wouldn't play it over PC, but if I didn't play PC and I had a lot of friends that were playing on console yeah. uh, just because they want to play on console, this is a great game. Do you I play differently great. at all? Like, do you approach it differently? Like, um, was there anything that you thought would be more, more challenging on a controller that's, that's not? Mm, 
not really. So there's this other mechanic too that's in the game. There's this like little roll here. Yeah. Uh, this is not on PC. Right. It's supposed to help you maneuver certain things because you know mouse is obviously more precise. You can click where you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this kind of just you know you can roll the way you want to. The thing is for me like playing a demon hunter like he has a skill that can kind of evade already. Right, okay. So since that's better, I'm not using the roll. But I could see melee classes using the roll uh, more often yeah. because it's like oh there's you know freezing pulse on the ground or something, you want to get away from it, that's a fast way instead of just kind of like panic running what away. What about like ranged like or AOE Or if you're trying stuff. to catch up with dudes when you're trying to keep that right. multiplier up, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was your question? Sorry, what about like ranged AOE stuff where you're like trying to like do some AOE in the back in the distance? Uh, you can do that. I think that the screen is a little bit more like limited than PC. Like I think if I was doing that on PC, because it, it's zoomed out more on PC, right. okay. it might actually hit stuff further away. So. On this, it's got to at least be on the edge of the screen, I feel like, um, for it to actually hit. Like, within that yeah. corner of the screen. Um, but yeah, so let me... I'm not really following to find the Butcher since eh, I'm talking. That's all right. But uh, I'm going to show you what you would get if uh, you finish the bounties. Um, oops. Did you get some one of these uh, currencies for the like Nephilim rift? Yeah. Rift so stuff? you get rift keystones as you finish each uh, bounty, and then if you finish a whole axe bounty, uh, you get a reward, which is whoops, still terrible with these controls. What's the menu um, like? No, um, no. I would say it's it's a little weird for me at first because coming from PC, it's like okay, I is inventory or like yeah. C is my character, whereas like this is like pressing the touchpad, and then like. But the start button is also for other things, so it's right. just kind of getting my head wrapped but up. Get, getting through all this is all right? Yeah, this is all right. I mean, like, this is the only thing, like, if you were playing locally that would kind of slow you down is, like, if I wanted to change an item or a skill or something like yeah. that, which happens from time to time, uh, I would have to pause, you'd have to wait. I don't think it's like that when you're playing online, uh, but they do have, like, a quick inventory kind of, like, like oh, a okay. quick shortcut way. The only thing is you can't just tell. Four. You can see that like cycling just above on the right on the left side of the screen, just above all the his like health bars. Skills, and whatnot. yeah. So uh, I think these are just the items that I have in my inventory that I could switch to. Right. Uh, it's harder to tell. Like two two shields means like you're getting more life or resistance. You don't actually get to see what it is yeah. until you go into your inventory. Um, but yeah. So anyways, this is what you would get from uh, if you finish it. Oh, I'll tell you about that gift thing too. So you get a Harajic cash, sorry. Oh man. Um, and it drops a bunch of things. There Dude, are... that Templar stealing all your stuff. No, that's me. Mm. <laughs> uh, but those bounty bags can have act specific loot uh, legendaries that you can actually get, which are really good. Certain acts have like really good ones. Like act one has a ring that's like <gasps> really good. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but it's, actually, it's actually like, a, it's a game changing ring, Sick man. Like, how does it change the game to like because put that bling on? What it is is that that ring helps you get your set bonuses easier. Oh. It takes away like the requirement of like one extra thing. So like if to get like a three you piece bonus. You could have four out of five. Yeah, to get the five piece the bonus, bonus. And you could still have the four out of five and you get All that. Right. So then you get the rift keystone currencies, which then you put into this obelisk, Nephilim obelisk, sorry. And it lets you go into a uh, Nephilim Rift, which is another kind of new thing. If this is what they added to PC. the PC one yeah. a couple of months ago. Eric, yeah. go deep into the lore. What is a Nephilim? It's a... Uh, so it's like an Oculus Rift, but it's, it's <laughs> like a different company that are doing a kind of a cheap version of it. Yeah. Um, but in this game, uh, it's... If I remember the story right, it's like a, a Nephilim... Jesus, is that Stitches? No, it's... It looks like, like Stitches. Like an What's um, a, who's Stitches? Stitches is the fucking dude from Duskwood in World of Warcraft who just yeah. roamed around. He was an Elise that you did not mess with on the path. Stitches is in Heroes of the Storm, though, as a uh, mobile. Yeah. Character. Well, he's from Warcraft, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or his peep, his type are from War. What are they called again? A-bombs? They're abominations. Abominations, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. A-bombs. But I think the, the lore behind the Nephilim, or the, like, which is who you are, is like, you're a powerful being. I believe that is like descended upon, like a uh, descended from like the angels and whatnot. Sure, like, yeah, uh, definitely. So you're supposed to have, you know, be more powerful than a human. Uh, but you seems... specifically, and so you're able to go into the Nephilim Rift and get uh, it, basically the pay. It's just they're more challenging. Is oh. that the idea? Uh, the Nephilim Rifts, what they're supposed to be, are kind of like a random, randomized dungeon that has 
you know, like different areas with different monsters, uh, which is something that's not. In, it's like that it's, wasn't part of the game because yeah. it was all story. It's like monsters that wouldn't have necessarily been in one area. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like totally randomized, right? Yep. Yeah. So this just gives people a way Mix to like, and match the horrid abomination. You know, go go to different levels. Oh, I got legendary. Sweet. Oh no, it's a recipe. That sucks. <laughs> that's literally you, you went from one end of the spectrum to the other. Right yeah. There. Well, yeah. I mean, like it's good for later. So it's this emotional experience, <laughs> Diablo three. Is, evil is there anything tradition. like uh, you're playing this, you know, because you're a massive fan? Mm -hmm. Is there anything in this that if there are folks at home who are playing this on PC that they should feel compelled to get in on this? Um, it's hard to say. Like I said, if you're hardcore into PC, you're probably not playing this, and right. I think Blizzard knows that because they've they've come out and said plenty of times that they they feel like this market, like the console market, is for you know different than their PC market. Yeah. Um, but like they've I said, they've released games on consoles before. Uh, yeah, you're right. Two, two was on PlayStation 2, right? Uh, was it? I think Diablo 1 was on PlayStation okay. 1, and then like they didn't do it for Diablo 2. I oh, think. really? But well, okay. what about that couch co-op? Couch co-op is fun. I yeah. mean, I remember when we, when, when we first got Diablo 3 in the up. office, uh, when Carolyn was playing and, and the rest of them, they were having more fun than they thought they would. Yeah. And I think couch co-op is, a like you said, it's like a, it's a very fun... Kind of thing. And Hyper Flood wants to know: Does it like is there slowdown, or does it still run very smoothly when you've got more players on screen? It's fine. I think they they've tuned the game to you know respond properly for uh, you know four people, even if you have a bunch of skills going on at the same time. I think that's another reason why they actually only limited it to four people. It used to be eight in Diablo mm -hmm. 2, but wow. I think there's so much stuff on the screen. It seems excessive. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was also a complaint by people that there wasn't eight, but there's so much stuff happening on the screen that I could see why they couldn't have eight. Um, people. Yeah. So it's four couch co-op. You can play online co-op. Uh, you can do all sorts of character transfer stuff. If you folks want to know more about Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition, we did an hour live stream with two Diablo developers on the game, and they delved into like all sorts of stuff to do with the uh, transfer of the game from PC to consoles, what kind of content you're getting in it, what kind of uh, obstacles they had to overcome to put it on console, what kind of adjustments they've made, and how co-op works and online connectivity and importing your character. The whole shebang. Uh, but Eric Tay, Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition, thanks for coming on, showing it yeah, off. Yeah, thank you for having He's me. He's right as well, it didn't come out on PlayStation 2, Diablo 2. Yes. Thank you hey for, man, yeah. he knows it all. I got it. He's I got just it nothing. down. Fact finding. Thanks, Sandy. Way to, way to own up to it. <laughs> thank you. All right, folks, uh, we'll be back in a minute with Kevin Van Ord and talking about Bloodborne, a game that made a big splash at Gamescom, and then Metro Redux. But first, we're going to take a look at a quick trailer for GTA 5. There's some new stuff coming <laughs> to the world of Los Santos. Let's take a look. Head X-ray runway 7, hold section runway 1, 2, hold short runway 7 to be the turn. Glad you're back. Out here is where America's heroes play. And you can too. Hi, I'm JG Boyd, retired Marine, leadership performance coach, and reenactment enthusiast. Now you can take America's tax dollars out for a test drive at the San Andreas Flight School. If you've always wanted to pay to enjoy the thrill and exhilaration of being a patriotic hero without having to put in real time and effort, the San Andreas Flight School is for you. Put the life back into your midlife crisis. Like any sensible new father, learn the art of hot dogging in our new jets or swift helicopter. Or demonstrate your continued manliness with a road race. Master air and land superiority, and then fly the flag of your country on our new patriotically themed parachute bags. It's a fact. Women love men in uniform who shower with other men and look moody while riding motorcycles. Woohoo! Look at that. Come be part of the montage. The San Andreas Flight School. The best of the best. Los Santos, baby. <laughs> Still happening. What do you guys think? New GTA stuff? Rob Handler, you're probably taking a look at it. Yeah, I am. I uh, just finished installing it. I can't wait to get into it. It looks great. All right, so probably later this week, you'll hear the Rob report on new GTA uh, Couple days. stuff. Yeah. Kevin Van Ord, you're Hi. on the couch now. Hey, yo. Hi. Yo. Welcome. Uh, guys, we're going to talk about Bloodborne in a second. Okay, Kay. we're going to talk about Bloodborne now. <laughs> okay. So uh, they showed a bunch of new gameplay footage at Gamescom. Yeah. Uh, we want to take a look at it again because it looks really good. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys make of this game? You know, uh, 
Well, I mean, Dark Souls. I mean, that's Dark Souls is my favorite game right? of the generation we have just climbed out of. <laughs> and <laughs> We've uh, clawed our way free of the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 3. Th- no, we have. It, it, We're still there. But, you know, look, it, it's true. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. And I see, and I see some comments on the, on the video and on the, on, on, the, on the stuff saying, you know, it's just Dark Souls, blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I don't know that that Dark necessarily has to be a, a bad thing, you know. Uh, no. Uh, so I, I, I really like the way it looks. I really love the art style. I mean, it doesn't, when I look at it, it, it looks like, it, okay, so, so it plays a little bit like, you know, somewhat like Dark Souls. It uses some of the same basic mechanics, but this world doesn't really look like it feels like Dark Souls. And that's a big part of the Dark Souls experience mm-hmm. is the feel. So now you've got Bloodborne, and it looks like this Victorian era, you know, Jack the Ripper type uh, atmosphere. So you're looks talking really specifically different. about the environmental design because I yeah. look at this and, and the, it and looks the, like the movement. It looks like you know the the UI, like it, the enemies, sort of the, the spacing, the lighting. Mm. It feels very much oh, yes. like a Dark Souls, and it's from oh, yes. you know from Software is one of the developers on it. I think they're working with another team that is escaping my brainium right now. But you're right. This is not a world like this is a very distinct environment. Yeah. Like, yeah. They showed, you know, crowds of like um, enemies walking around. They seem to be doing like their own thing. Like I mean, I I actually never, never played really Dark Souls, but if there's anything I would say about that is uh, bosses seem pretty I don't know, generic a little bit as comp- like compared to like bosses here where, you know, they're they're moving around, they're, you know, well, I guess we're like, we're like three into the Soul series as it were, so, you know, it's I guess the the thing that will always pop out is the change of environment. Uh, have they mm-hmm. touched, touched on like how much technology is going to play a part here? Because obviously, like weapons, like guns, range weapons, that like changes up the combat quite a lot. We're seeing a lot of hand on hand here, or like melee uh, fighting. Have they talked, or have you have you seen anything, Kevin, that like makes it look different in terms of? Well, they they the talked combat? about um, how how you're going to replenish health if you're more aggressive. Okay. Like if you really get in there and start chopping up enemies mm-hmm. um, in 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 combo land, then you're gonna you're gonna be able to start like earning health by doing that. And I think the the intention is to is to uh, get you to focus on a on a more aggressive style of play than maybe Dark Souls would offer. That will be interesting for me because my dark because as a you know, I go into Dark Souls stamina heavy. Like I'm mm. all about taking as many hits as I can before I can get in my own, you know, my own chance. So I'm kind of you want, curious. You want like, to be able to block. Yeah. So I'm yeah. curious. Is this gonna is this gonna have me a little more active? Is this gonna have me having to be a little more agile? Um, I don't know. But then you look at stuff like that. And it's like, oh, he rolls the same way. Oh, mm-hmm. he, mm-hmm. you know, he he moves the same way, attacks the same way, cloth moves the same way. So. And of course, I look at that bit. There's a bit where he picks up the torch in the darkness, and, and uh, it looks like, oh, you need the torch for the darkness. But we heard that already about Dark Souls 2, and that didn't really come to fruition. Look at that dude. But the enemy That's design sick. is so good! Are they going to have guns as well? I hope. Enemies. Would you have guns as or rocket launchers? As opposed to just like a, a brick? <laughs> <laughs> this guy has. When you're, that, when you're as big as that dude, all you need is a brick. All you need is a you brick. Just grab his junk. <laughs> Oh, Good he knocked him on his butt. We can only hope. When's this bad boy out again? Sometime 2015? So that's an interesting move, too. The leap in and the jump. Kevin doesn't care. Oh, right. Yeah, 2015. Yeah, it's, it's I'm sorry. I'm, I'm watching the footage. I'm watching the footage. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, old, the old giant axe spin attack. So, yeah. Uh, certainly, you know, creature design, always the strength of the Dark Souls. Or of the Souls uh, series. That seems to be represented here Souls quite genre well. now. Right? It it's, really is. It, it, well, you know. I mean, I feel like we have to have a few more imitators, but I don't know. We had one. Uh, we have imitators now. Wet. So, yeah. We put wet in there as well. Wet? <laughs> wet? Yeah. Wet. That is definitely the most Soulsy in game. Oh, sorry, I we can... just haven't talked about it. I don't Dude, think anyone's mentioned so that game in the bit. Well, we've got that other game that looks very Soulsy coming up, and now I suddenly forgot the name of it. It's uh, called Wet 2. No. <laughs> Blade, Blade something. Wet Harder. Um, somebody out there knows what I'm talking wet about. Blade. I've suddenly forgotten the name of the. Hellblade. It's not wet. It's not no, Hellblade. No, it's not Hellblade. All right. But it's not wet. I am looking forward to Hellblade though, because Ninja Theory. Thumbs up. I'm looking forward to them renaming that Heavenly Sword too. <laughs> They've come right out and said it's not Heavenly Sword. I know. Sword. I know. Enslavedly that, sword. That, no, that's actually. I, 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 I like, I like the fact that they're not lying. They're not resting on their their old. IPs for a little bit of marketing hype. All right, that's a look at Bloodborne in action, folks. Uh, now, Kevin, get, get yourself into some Metro Redux. Let's talk yeah. about Artyom yeah. and friends. Uh, Rob, you look like you're holding the controller. I mm. am. Are you going to drive us here into Ooh. the uh, post-apocalyptic it's, it's pronounced redo. Moscow? 
because they redid it. Redo. 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 It's like Apocalypse Redo. Now. Redo. Isn't, that, isn't, isn't that a cooking thing where you like cook stuff down and you like drizzle reduce. some redo on top of it's it? Redo. Uh, you make a roux. There you go. A roux redo. That's a redo. It's a reru. <laughs> what am I talking about? Nobody's nobody's here to listen. So to me Metro rap. Redux is Metro 2033 and Metro, Metro Last, Last Light together in one Xbox One PlayStation 4, 4 package. PC, PC package as well. Mm -hmm. um, yes, as a matter of fact, yes. And uh, the, the, one of the most important things is the way Metro 2033 has been improved visually and brought sort of up to the Metro Last Light level. Um, so now 2033 has the Metro Last Light interface. It now includes the, the same weapon crafting. Mm -hmm. And th there's, there's some interesting stuff too where you can sort of play Last Light more in the style of 2033 in the sense that uh, it will it will sort of reduce the amount of ammo and reduce, gas masks see? that you've... Yeah. Exactly, redo yep. the uh, ammo and, and gas masks and so on and sort of tweak the experience so it feels more like a 23. 2033 experience. In which you, you have to, it feels a little bit more uh, scant, the resources scant, you find. Scant, a, a little bit more scary, a little bit more like survival horror mm -hmm. might feel like. But then if, but then you also can apply the sort of the last light, a little bit more gung-ho aspect to Metro 2033. So you can play both games in a way that more or less they can feel the same, regardless of whether you preferred sort of the 2033 style or whether you preferred the last light style. But more interesting is 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 the visual upgrade to me at least because at least now, in the first game yeah at least with the first game well with last light you barely notice if you're mm. playing on PC for example you're not getting a drastically different uh, different game in fact and you're I mean, getting last, essentially the same last game. light was just out last it was year just last so year. you can't expect there to be leaps and bounds that they're going to be able to take for it but right. 2033 is a different but story. 2033 is definitely a different story and if you were to play them back to back and when I played them. I, you know, having played 2033 and Last Light in the past, I actually did this thing where I was going back and forth chapter to chapter to chapter to chapter to chapter to chapter to sort of look and see how... Yeah, I like that moment. You didn't I, make I it, I like Rob. this moment when you go under, underwater and you're yeah. like, Oh! I blew it! It's probably really cold. You guys have no idea how cold that stinky Moscow water is. I'm gonna guess it's pretty cold, considering there's lots of ice and snow around. Um, but to, and, I, and I'm no expert on weatherology. That's true. You do not have your weatherology degree. You've only taken a few online courses. Yes. But the, the the games do look, you know. And I said this in the review, and you should go read the review, but not now after you're finished watching us, of course. Mm -hmm. Homework. But you know, I mentioned in the review, you know, something I feel very strongly about, which is like instead of it feeling like a game and sequel, it now feels more like, you know, sort of like a Walking Dead-ish kind of thing, where it's like, here's the game, first part of the game, and now here's the second part of the game. D so do they narratively kind of complement each other that way? Like, does, does at the end of 33, do you feel like Last Light picks up from it? Yes, well, Last Light does pick up mm. directly from the event And does Last Night have like a satisfying ending? So, um... It what? does, uh, 2033 has a good oh, ending, Jesus. but also there's a choice at the end of it there's that a, there's is a, then it only ends up, Last Light only starts one way. So okay. regardless there's only of what one choice canon. you made at the end of right. 2033, yes. yeah, the canon through line and, may be different. And I don't want to give anything away, of course, but, and it's interesting, Last Light was my favorite game last year, so, which, which always seems to surprise a lot of people, but uh, I really like the upgrades oh. to 2033. Of, there are a couple things that I miss. Um, one is I feel like the the, the the nosalices the which are one of which is like the <laughs> some of the creatures Double the nosalis right yeah. got blood on my I face. say nosalice <laughs> you no say nosalis the Russian dudes in the game say nosalis I know, I know I'm, kid, I'm kidding I'm kidding oh okay so anyway so I like I, in some cases I like the way they look in mm -hmm. the first game a little bit more they're Whoa. they're a little bit more oh dark one uh, they're a little bit more like furry <laughs> and well yeah speedy little bugger. But they're, they're furry and okay. a little bit more furry, and they used to look a little bit more creepy and alien. They now weird they have this naked mole rat thing going on. Yeah, the yeah, first one. yeah, yeah. They look a, they look a little bit more. Honestly, they look like they probably belong more in this Whoa. world than the original design. But the original design had that sort Wap of creepy face. alien look yeah, that face. that freaked me out. Yeah. Um, and there are a few other things like some of the gas masks. That 2033 has that gas mask that has the they 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 have the. Um, the, the night vision goggles that are attached that mm -hmm. come down. Yeah. And I don't remember seeing any of those in the in the Redux version, but you see those in the 
um, in the original 2033, and it's a really interesting <laughs> looking helmet, and I kind of missed that while I was playing Redux, because I don't remember seeing any there. Um, but, uh, and of course, some people just like the, the lighting is much improved, but some people kind of like that old lighting because it was more high contrast yeah. and, and a little bit faker looking, but they kind of liked the, you know, but side by side, like you can really tell the difference. You can check out Rob's thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, I guess you're seeing it on the screen the right now. now yeah. um, I mean, he's the got the graphics is different. Comparison. That's really awesome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, thank God they got that. Done. But this is really interesting. Like, here's the original, and then there's, yeah. you can see That's the, crazy. you know, a big difference. You know, yeah. the, the, Presumably, they had to, like, this was n not just a, a real simple, you know, texture replate. They had to oh, fundamentally yeah, this is, this is replace a bunch of... Oh, yeah, this is completely redone like, mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Um, even even so cut scenes, like... Um, you know, there there are places. So so in the in Metro twenty thirty three, the original like a lot of cutscenes took place and showed you um, Artyom in the in the third person, and now everything takes place in first oh, person right, okay. to keep it um, more in line with how they did Metro Last Light. So another thing they did, we talked about this, was how they they seem to have changed a lot of voiceover as well. A lot of voiceover, and that that For ended up really bothering mm -hmm. me. We we had this discussion yesterday yeah. about the the bit in twenty thirty three where you come across a kid and you put them on your shoulders and kind mm -hmm. of take them home through the thing. So video game children look freaky most of the time anyway. Um, and <laughs> often like kind of sound freaky too because they're adults playing children. Adults playing children, but also like, yeah, the, just the character model and the way that it's like, you, the proportions are just they're not always, right, or they'll have like a fully little formed adults, man right? jaw, and it's like you're nine years old. So, and, and, and this, game is, this game is no exception, but that whole bit, like you come across the kid, he doesn't look like a kid, he looks like a miniature adult, he sounds like a miniature adult when he talks, and the dialogue makes no sense yeah. because he's not saying anything a child would actually say. Yo, you got a pack and of smokes. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do my Basically. fucking taxes. <laughs> so there, there, Where are you bits, going? <laughs> there are bits like that. My wife's breaking my balls. Of the the kind of I got kids. <laughs> <laughs> there are bits like that that kind of stand out. Um, and they stood out before, You're but now they stand awesome. out even I'm more really because uh, oh, it's this way. just jump down. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, and what's so funny is like it's clearly a you know a woman you know pretending to be a oh, young boy. Oh, it's like boy. it's the Bart yeah, Simpson, like Bart Simpson effect, okay. but you know she at least pulls yeah. it off. Nancy yeah. Cartwright actually sounds like a boy. Like Bob's Burgers, Ollie and Andy are are <laughs> right. you know the Silverman sisters. But literally, you know, it, so it sounds like. But they like, sound like boy. <laughs> hey, Mister! Like, come on over here! I know the way. <laughs> He's got this oversized his, coat on, and his and his fantastic uh -oh, Russian accent that you just showed off. Yes, oh, thank you. Oh, you're done. I had to do the hands. Hey, Mister, he's got this <laughs> oversized jacket. Uh, Follow me. Doing? I'm a kid. You know, it's me. A child. The fuck is a believable on? child. Like some I new, like this new, kid. New Jersey Oliver Twist. <laughs> <laughs> So that yes, I, are we talking about a game? I forgot I exactly we're, what we're doing. I think we're reenacting I just, newsies. I just want to see this fucked up kid now. That's all I, see. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna get there. And this, it's right. it's quite a bit ahead of this. Um, uh, is this worth some playing actually, for someone we who's? We could. We could actually do it. Do it. Do you try. Have I think on, we can do uh, it. Yeah. On Xbox One. I mean, it's, we want to check out this new menu. I think it looks great. We can just watch that for like two two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Check what are loading, loading times like? Look at that. Here's a, here's an, and I didn't mention this in the review, but you know one more. of those little things that kind of bothers me as you go through is that you find um, diary pages mm -hmm. that you pick up. Now in most games, you're picking up other people's like remnants. In in here, you're picking up your own things. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, what did you do? Go to all these places beforehand <laughs> yes. and spread your own diary <laughs> around? And then you're going through and, and also like, why would you up? be picking your diary? It's like why are you, you know you? what's in it. Yeah. You're learning. You wrote it. Oh, that's right. You're Isn't learning it like, from your own words. This doesn't yeah. make any sense. Oh Don't my you, God, aren't you picking up a piece of paper and then maybe taking a moment to do a diary entry? Is yeah. that what it is? Like, like stalker oh, I found, stuff. I like found some paper in a quiet moment. I'm gonna like would be, record it, some of not, my thoughts. That's not like how the game how presents it's presented. It's just yeah. like you you just pick up a, a dossier right there and pick it up. It's like, oh, that's great. So here's what I was thinking. <laughs> if all if I hadn't read this, I would never have known really? the contents of my own brain. But other other like obviously, I think both. I think 2033 is quite good, and I think Blast Light is really, yeah, really excellent. I mean, it remains excellent. We're having some fun at the game's expense, but so. I think this is one of those situations where, like, you know, there's a few weird things that sort of stand out to you or are fun to talk about, but, like, overall, these are excellent games, yeah. and this is, like, a really great way to, to play them. Oh, totally. And one of the uh, one thing I like about it, now, I like 
you know, I, I, we had a kind of a difference of opinion in terms of like the pervading darkness and whether that works to the to the game's advantage or not. But mm -hmm. but I really like, and and this comes as no surprise to anybody that knows how much I love Dark Souls. But I, I love this kind of atmosphere anyway. But one of the things I really love is that it's not cheesy here. It's not. I mean, you spend a lot of time simply existing in these places. Mm -hmm. And when people talk, and these guys have these Russian accents, they kind of sound, you know, they're always looking a little bit, they're always telling like little jokes, they're always just trying to get a little bit of humor in there. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it feels like, okay, these guys, these are guys who have lost hope. But, uh, you know, a little bit of vodka, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of making fun of things, and, you know, maybe they found a reason to, to, to push through this. Yeah, they've got this, like, this flinty humor of, that's like, <clears throat> you know, there's a defeated air to them, but they're still just like, well, that's my world. Yeah, it's I'm like, well, it, you know, let's you go get, on and see what's going. What so what do you do? What do you think about that girl over there, huh? <laughs> You know, and and of and of course, boobs. So if you're into that, there's there's some boobs. Is there new HD there boobs? Is are the I, boobs redoed? It's really <laughs> no, straight up they are. Like I've never played the scene. <laughs> I play the scene, and then this girl walks by, and you're like, oh, she's got big ones, huh? I'm and surprised. then you do the redux, and you see it, and it's like she even looks at you. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, Have it's they, like, hand oh, completely no. redone. I'm surprised go, go, go. you didn't put that in the graphics I comparison. Know. Just yeah, um, wipe back and forth across that a few times. It's Restrain. really thank it's, you for your restraint, Rob. It, it's <laughs> really yeah. It, the game does this whole world has sort of a, a, a really interesting. Way. Women don't um, have much more um, to do in this. In this they're, world, they're not out roaming the tunnels. From, they're just kind of sitting stationary in yeah, the cities you, where you, you can interact with them a little bit, making weird get, adult you know, babies. Um, <laughs> you know, strong woman um, in in last light, mm -hmm. but it's it's not a, a role that is is really fleshed out or even accompanies you for long. Instead, so. you just hang out with a guy named Bourbon. Bourbon. Bourbon is fun. I think bourbon is really fun. Is it bourbon like the like the drink or like the chocolate biscuits? No, it's like the drink. All right. It's yeah. like the drink. What? Chocolate you don't get biscuits? that reference either. That's a, right. no, Danny. I, I have no idea what you're talking <laughs> Sorry. about. Sorry, I don't understand Irish biscuits. My, you <laughs> everything I know about uh, Irish people, I learned from the Assassin's Creed trailer. Great. So. Yeah, yeah. Shea, Shea that Patrick, guy's accent's uh, legit. Shea Patrick Connor, or whatever his name is. It's not Connor, how, Shea how, Patrick, what is it? It is, it's Cormac. Cormac. Is it? Cormac. Yeah, he's got three <laughs> first names. That's like calling somebody, like an American character, Billy Joe Bob or something. Doesn't make any sense. How far away from this weird kid are we, Rob? Don't stand on the thing, what did you Oh, that's right. He was Whoa! showing you Oh, Jesus thing. Christ. Wow. Oh, he died. Yeah, he was showing you and everything. And you're like, blah, 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 Irish people. <laughs> it wasn't my fault that he fucking killed his friend. That's true, that was Rob's fault. He just he just ran straight through the tripwire. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> don't Snip do that. Those. To, those. to see the weird kid, why don't you get Metro Last Light redo for yourself? That's right. <laughs> see yeah, the that's kids. right. You're get like, I don't know where it is. I can't find it. Weird but there kids. is there is the creepy moment with the kid, and the kid's all creepy. So don't say the creepy moment with the kid, Kev. But then you don't say that. So it's Metro then you Redux. Fall down, you fall down the holes. And Xbox One, PS4, PC, fifty bucks. 50 bucks. It's 50 bucks. Yes. Yes. It's 50 bucks. Maybe. Sorry. Cool. Now no. next week. Like, we, we get next it a week, week early. We get to talk oh. about it like, yeah, we get to talk about it like a whole week early. Great job. Cool. Like, so good for us. We get to play and you don't right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, took a turn there, Kevin. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming I like, on anyways. I, I like to lord it over others. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rob. Thanks. For uh, nobly trying to get us to see a weird kid, but instead just yeah. killing your buddy. Oh, well. You're a weird kid, so we got to see you. Stay with a dude. There you go. Can you, can you do the whole? Can you do the thing again, the, the Boston thing? Uh oh, one more Mister, time. Mister, I knows the way. Just give me a couple bucks. I'll hey, show you. Rob, Got Rob. any smokes? Nah, not for me. For my dad. Just Rob. kidding. For me. We have to toss to a Destiny trailer. Why don't you? Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. In that voice. So up next, we got a Destiny trailer. Stay tuned. Nah, we've over egged it. <laughs> over egged it. We're tryhards now. <laughs>
doesn't matter who you were, only what you will become. There's three European. That is like just three weeks away. I am very excited for it. All right, well, please join me in welcoming to the couch uh, Dave and John from Dynamity, guys. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Uh, Counter Spy. It's a game that folks on GameSpot have gotten some a few looks at before, but it's out today. Also, we're giving some of them away. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and retweet GameSpot's tweet about the giveaway and follow GameSpot, you can win some Counterspy codes. You guys generously provided. Uh, but, dude, your your game's out today. How, all right, how are you even like controlling yourself enough to sit still on the couch? <laughs> this must be so exciting for you. It's such a great feeling. I mean, we've been working so hard on this for over a year and a half now, and so finally to get it out and put it in front of people and let get some feedback from what people think about it, it's just such a great feeling. You know, a little bit of relief, but also a lot of excitement. A lot so. of excitement, and so we're playing on PS4 now, and but you guys are also on PS3 and PS Vita. Yep, that's correct. Uh, it's cross buy, and it has cross save, uh, cross save capability. Well. Music to my ears. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, do you guys get it, I, Danny? You get excited as I do when you hear that because it's oh, just it's, it's like a deal breaker sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, completely. Okay, I'm really lazy. It's it's not. <laughs> it's like when. It's like when I hear that it's got cross save, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm in. It's like, because my so TV is like the... 10 feet away from my bed, but that 10 feet is a big difference when it comes to like, <laughs> like just wanting to be in bed and doing it on the Vita, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice work putting in that extra, that extra effort, because not enough people do it. Very cool. It's the best. You uh, just have to have TVs throughout your entire house, <laughs> and you can do it that way as well, right? I tried to do that Gone thing. Gone are those dark old play. days. <laughs> Think of all the counter space you can free up and wall space. Counter space for counter spy. Right. Counter space Got for it. counter spy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're playing as uh, a spy as in the counter organization. I don't know if we have a camera angle that can check the, the wall art in the back that you guys added on, but uh, it's on there. We'll, we'll get it, get a look at it. Uh, but this is you guys are you guys really. Leaned into and are big fans of that sort of 60s, 70s Cold War era, and that and this this stuff almost looks like propaganda art a little bit. Mm. Like, well, um, yeah, we kind of uh, I guess one way that we've described it before is it's sort of um, a little bit of our love letter t of to the Incredibles, mixed in uh, with a little bit of Bond and kind of a dash of Doctor Strange love. Um, and the propaganda angle is, I guess, something that, um, so Mark, who's our art director, um, really brought to it. He went crazy on, like, when you go throughout the levels, you'll see all these sort of posters and all the design around the world. Um, and because we kind of focus this on you're, you're, you're going into both superpowers, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're not uh, um, a U.S. or a Soviet agent, um, or in our world, the the superpowers of the imperialists and the socialists, right? Um, and so you're this sort of rogue agency that's breaking into both of them. Which one is the socialists? <laughs> well, what do you think? We could have a long discussion about that. Yeah, actually, we could get real deep on deep some politics. geopolitical stuff right. here. Uh, but I'm not, I, I can't read Russian. Does this actually say stuff in Russian or do you guys just make like? It is Russian. Okay. It is Russian. You don't but know like the Cyrillic alphabet, words, is that what you're could, telling me? Google no, Translate tells us it's Russian. <laughs> Excellent. I'll just get, yeah, hold up my phone to it, get some translation going, it'll be good. Would you refer to this video game as a 2.5D game? Is that fair or is that super reductive? Um, yeah, sure. Two, two and a half D, I guess. Um, I think, <laughs> what does it mean? Because that's what made it pop right. out to me the first time I saw it, was, was seeing all this stuff. Well, I think that the thing that we kind of got excited about was, um, so sort of the inspiration is very much our, our love for sort of classic arcade-style side-scrollers, right? Mm. Um, but because we're pl building it out in 3D, uh, we kind of realized that we could open up the combat space a little bit more and have these cover points. Um, where you pop into cover and the camera shifts around. Mm. So yeah, I think that, to your point about the 2.5D, I guess that's a, a good way of describing that's it. That's something a games journalist <laughs> would say, I suppose. Exactly, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> we'll go with it. Yeah, I mean, we just love the way that, you know, with 2D side-scrollers, you can have a fairly simple control scheme, mm -hmm. but then when you can switch into the 3D camera like this, we can still set up pretty cool dramatic angles like this, and so, you know, you can have sort of a little bit more of a kind of almost cinematic-y type setup that but you're not sitting there having to control the camera yourself. Yeah. It's like, 
you know, we do it for them, basically. And that is kind of a neat way of amplifying that sort of cinematic uh, appeal, that kind of, you know, the the dramatic <laughs> angle of, oh, jeez, <laughs> nice. Bit of awesome ragdoll there. Nice. <laughs> He's now just a permanent fixture in this bunker. Exactly. Uh, What's your mission coming in here, then? Because I noticed a lot of, like, collectible stuff in, like, hidden areas and whatnot, right? Yeah, so, um, because... Basically, the, both superpowers are trying to uh, launch rockets at the moon. They're sort of in this race against time, and you're trying to stop them. So throughout the game, you're you're looking for the launch plans like that. Your your main goal is collect all the launch plans so that you can uh, uncover one of the locations, go there, sabotage the rocket. Uh, but along the way, there's a lot of hidden areas to explore and discover stuff. Um, there's things like blueprints that you collect, and that's how you'll uh, complete your um, you unlock weapons, uh, mm -hmm. dossiers. There's lots of little collectibles. Um, I just actually also wanted to draw your attention because John normally doesn't play as well as this. Um, <laughs> I was going to say two headshots back yeah. to back. Yeah. He's yeah. actually, nice if, if you look in the top right of the corner, there's a stealth combo that he has oh, uh, cool. going. That's actually a pretty cool advanced uh, sort of way to play the game. So for people who are diving into the game now, um, sort of earning currency in the game, particularly as it gets harder, like that becomes more and more important. Um, you'll find intel in the world and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, the stealth combos will be a big points multiplier. The more people you can sort of stealth kill in a row, uh, adds up oh, to more points, and then you get more cash <laughs> at the end. You kind of, your agent bonus goes up. I guess. Oh, nice. Well, there's a little paid. secret up there, John. Uh, is there also like a... Do you guys have like a leaderboard uh, yep. that sort of that also surfaces on? Yeah, we've got uh, leaderboards, um, and we also have a kind of a cool little feature where there's this rival spy mode. So uh, once all your friends are playing and you're seeing their scores on the leaderboard, the game will start giving you um, a friend's score for that level and uh, as a target. And then if you can beat their score and sort of best it then on the next level you can go find their agent and then you'll get more points, more cash, oh, please. But you can go find like their, what, find yeah, their agent? What do you mean by that? So basically uh, you beat their score yeah. and then on the next level um, their the agent enemies? is hidden somewhere in the level, oh. their <laughs> downed back. agent. So if you can find their downed agent in the level, you can kind of get the intel off of them and then you'll get some extra cash. Oh, interesting. They yeah. just show up as a sort of an extra objective yeah, Spot. it's like instead of just chasing your friend's leaderboard and going, oh, I beat your score, it's just a little extra Easter egg where you can actually go out, um, look around. If you find the agent, then you'll you'll also get some extra extra cash for your game. Oh, I think this neat. might be my best stealth. I was about to say, Pop like, you're, you can see you like just being extra careful <laughs> now as well. Fixed. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I should say I'm like the engineer on the team here, and so I often end up spending a lot more time kind of staring at like some gnarly bug rather than actually <laughs> playing the game. So it's kind of fun to sit down here and uh, dive in. Of all days for you to excel, John, yeah. today's that day. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> when the pressure's on, huh? Uh, so I guess sort of the, the way you're moving through the levels, uh, it seems to be sort of, uh, you know, once you get to a, to a certain, you know, area, this board, this, you know, mm. the, between these two sets of doors, do you just kind of clear that area, move on to the nice. next area, and then progress that way? Do you ever have to sort of backtrack or anything like that? No, it's uh, the the John sort of playing in a methodical way, clearing the room, and that is generally a good way to play. Um, the the levels are all stitched together procedurally, so rooms get reordered in different mm. ways. So if you started playing a game again, you wouldn't see the same levels. Um, and so generally you start out on the left and then you're kind of moving in one direction. Um, there are areas where there, there's a little bit of branching, so there's like elevators and you can go down and there's sort of alternate paths that'll lead you to extra stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a lot of hidden areas, but um, generally like the way that, <coughs> excuse me, John's playing right now, He's also doing a good job of managing the DEFCON, which is the number that you see in the middle of the oh, head yeah. there, which is currently at three. So, oh. Uh, oh. I think he noticed his friend's head's missing. He did. John, I can't believe you might actually finish this level. Uh, I don't oh. want to jinx oh. it. Oh, I oh. <laughs> jinxed it. Oh. <laughs> I was so close. Well, oh, now right. I can start having so fun with So we it. might actually see <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the guys get on the radio, but basically um, <laughs> the DEFCON will go up. 
mm -hmm. uh, based on how much the enemy sees your presence in the world, right? So if they see you, they might start getting on the radio. So there there's a dude right now. He's radioing in. That's causing the DEF CON to go up. Oh, yeah. You can um, see the meter. It's sort right. Of to uh, security there. cameras, if they spot you, that'll cause the DEF CON to go up. Um, and also, if you die, there's a penalty. Um, and so that DEF CON pen, uh, level is something you kind of want to be managing throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And it also is consistent from level to level. So uh, if it gets too high, then they start a countdown and they're going to launch. And that way, you've just got to book it to the end of the level. Oh, great. Uh, and try and abort the launch. It's only so now I appreciate how difficult the headshots are, <laughs> that you've been like nailing them the entire time. <laughs> it's a little tougher when they're throwing bullets back yeah, at you. But yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a game about just sort of wading in. I mean, you're not. You're not able to take much damage. That DEFCON is going to go up fairly speedily. Right. But are you so? But here you completed the mission. The meter went down. So even though it it does sort of is a through line from mission to mission, there is a way to to reset it a little bit. Yeah, but if it went up to like two and then to one, yeah. like it won't go back down. Oh, I'm a bit croaky. Once it hits uh, the threshold <laughs> been that and broken. changes number, um, it won't re go back down from that number. It won't go back down, but you can uh, get it to go down. And one of, this is where one of the key uh, strategies you need to deploy oh, in the cool. game is uh, officers in the game. They're pretty cowardly lot. If you see an officer, <laughs> hopefully we'll see one in this next level. Yeah, you should definitely play an imperialist right. level. Um, yeah, if you see an officer in the level, um, uh, you should uh, take out all his friends so that he's all on his own. And then if you can aim your weapon at him, um, he'll surrender. And mm. then he'll actually call in and uh, lower the death. Oh, oh cool. cool. Hey, everything's cool yeah, over yeah, here, exactly. guys. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> yep, ship shape. No need to be so alarmed. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a key part of the game is, is managing that level. And it's one of the things... Um, at one point, we had just a, a straight countdown the whole time, and you're sort of running against the clock. But mm -hmm. it's one of these things during game development, you're always trying different things to see what works and what doesn't. And we, we kind of realized that it, it kind of took a lot of the fun of the exploration out of the game. Mm. And if you're always worrying about that clock going down, you're not really going to take your time to like wait for, to hide, wait for a dude to come up, and then you know yeah. stealth kill him. You're just going to be running. Um, and so this this sort of really helped stretch that out. It still gives the player something to manage mm -hmm. and keep an eye on. A little bit of pressure. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. But then once that countdown starts, then you know, okay, now I've got to kind of book it and get to the end. A lot of explosives are your friends. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> you named one after me. Oh, you guys. Uh, we that did that just so sweet. There you go. When Yay. we go to IGN and later, we have a, we have a <laughs> special one with like... Give a Greg in there as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One you guys, for everyone. You guys know your audience here. <laughs> <laughs> Easily pandered to. Uh, I'm a little worried you just went through that door. It said no spies through there. Um, is that exactly. going to be a problem? What does well, counter they, stand for? They're not really <laughs> big fans of us, so, you know. <laughs> what does counter stand for? Uh, we might run a competition and maybe okay. people can guess what it is. Uh, that's our clever way of saying we, we did have, um, we knew what it meant once. Did you lose a design We've done doc so many somewhere? late nights on this <laughs> right. game to get it done. Uh, it's locked away in some part of our brain somewhere, yeah. It actually is on a document somewhere. One night you're just going to sit up in bed yeah. at night and, right, so. and just like recite the entire right. yeah. So here's an officer. He, he actually hasn't seen you, so right. what you should do, John, is switch to a noisy weapon. Don't mess it up, John. And don't shoot him. I know. Don't shoot that barrel. It's so tempting, though. Oh, we can't. No, 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 don't though. shoot. Yeah, no. <laughs> Any Here other situation, so, yeah. I would always say shoot the barrel. So he spotted so me. So there you go. And so they make him surrender, and so the uh, DEF CON goes up there. Now shoot the barrel. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, oh, I wonder not, if this will. No, it won't. It will won't. that put the DEF CON back up? Oh, he should probably get out of there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Oh. No. <laughs> Great. We're, you're not allowed to uh, take out surrendered officers. <laughs> once they've, surrendered, once they've yeah. surrendered, it's, it's they're 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 the Geneva game. Convention exists in yeah, this game right. as well. Okay. Their lives are over anyways. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to go back and report to his superior commander now. So. <laughs> Ooh, there's a barrel. All right. All right. Maybe I'll just get a bit more fire. So aside yeah. from, like, the, you know, from looking as slick, you know, as John here, you know, that's a that's a motivation for stealth. Uh, the point system, stuff like that. Is there, uh, you know, <laughs> you complete, you, you you stay stealth, you complete it, you get more money to help then like upgrade your kit. Was that it? Come on, John, you're not playing. 
right, sorry, <laughs> I was listening. So, yeah. yeah, so you can basically, uh, you go through, you find blueprints, which will unlock new weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, you find formulas, which give you kind of boosts, like one-time boosts for, uh, for that level. Um, and then there's also dossiers, which give you a bit of the sort of backstory of the world of counter and uh, the two superpowers. Um, and uh, then as you play through the levels, you know, you're both trying to unlock those things and collect cash, which, you know, once you've uh, found all the blueprints for a oh, weapon, cool. you spend the uh, money to buy those new weapons. So it's here we not go. just pistols all day? No, so yeah. we've got a few kind of fun weapons that you can upgrade as you go on through, you know, sort of more powerful machine guns. Um, we have a mind control weapon that gets the, uh, the enemies to kind of attack each other. Yes, and so, you know, mind control. A few other fun ones there that people can find as they uh, play through the game. Like yeah, the, the game, it gets progressively harder the further you go. There's more elite cards, you know, take more damage, stuff like that. So some of the earlier weapons will lose a bit of their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So something like <clears throat> the, uh, the mind control gun is awesome because you can take a, if you can get one of the, the really tough guys with that, oh man. Oh, See? you killed the officer, Dave. Yeah. I don't know. Ruin my chance. You're um, supposed to be better than me, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's why you brought John along, Dave. He's the ace. Um, if, uh, I'm trying to Look talk at that. and play, though, John. So yeah. you know, it's hard, right? Credit right. Here. Victory yeah, doing two different things. There, Even there, you consult you your know victory I'm not a multitasker. That's John great. knows I'm not a multitasker. So you do pretty strategy. well. You should I'll see. Say. He'll try and talk to me when I'm working. I'm like, <laughs> what? Did someone say something? Um, what was I saying? I don't know, but I like it how was, this, this... It was super interesting, yeah. whatever so it was. So Dave's kind of going the, the other way here with a bit more of a <laughs> sort of aggressive playthrough. And so, you know, the game definitely yeah, supports great. both the play mm. styles. You know, if you just want to go in, use the explosives, have a bit of fun, you know. Are those the hats coming off or are they faces? <laughs> it's the hats. It's okay. a T-rated game. All right, okay. <laughs> but it's really the faces, right? That's wishful yeah. thinking, yeah. I think. I know we did have blood running down the skin in the last game, <laughs> but, you know, this one is <laughs> definitely for the youngsters as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, that mind control gun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good strategy for, for later on. Um, when you get those tough guys that come out and they're super hard to kill, shoot one of those guys with the mind control gun. So now he becomes a bullet sponge for his friends. Mm -hmm. They all turn on each other, and then sometimes you can just sit back and <laughs> let them kind of enjoy the battle other out. Just and check then, your tweets yeah. real quick. Exactly. <laughs> and then he's, hey, what's just going look on? up over there. All right, we're clear. <laughs> hey, cool. Uh, speaking of tweets, we have some winners. Oh my god. Uh, some victors uh, who are going to be getting counter spy codes. And I'm going to ask uh, one of you kind gentlemen if you wouldn't mind reading out the four Did names. Did they guess the name of the uh, counter? No, we didn't Maybe make it, it that hard for them. But uh, here are the winners <laughs> okay. uh, of counter spy codes. All right, number one is Hyper Flood. Woo! All right. Yay, Hyper Flood. Hyper Flood. Have fun. Uh, number two is NM Rain. Hooray! Making a rain. What do you think NM stands for? Need mm. more? Need, Need more, more rain. rain. That could be. Uh, He's next a farmer. One, X Matrix Gaming. Yep. Sure. Yeah, cool. Sounds like uh, the name of a. And the final one is Alvin Princessa. Princessa. Congratulations, the, uh, each and every one of you. Fantastic. You guys oh, for those who didn't win, your way. it's available today on the PlayStation Store. Correct? Yeah. Exactly. Could, uh, In fact, you, when's it out in Europe? Uh, it goes tomorrow. out, uh, yeah, Sweet. later on, same time tomorrow, so probably like 3, 4 in the afternoon. Cool. European time. I think it just went live around now, actually, on really? the PlayStation Store. So. Oh, man. Yep. Very cool. More pressure. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you guys, do you have any other platforms in mind? A PC release somewhere down the uh, way? Interesting, or? you might ask. <laughs> Anything? Uh, so, uh, so today it's available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, and Vita. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have uh, iOS and Android versions coming. All right. So um, those are, it's not the exact same game, but it is interesting because it has a lot of the same core mm. gameplay. You're still an agent, you're sneaking through levels, doing all your sort of spy stuff. So we're actually pretty excited about that. And it has cross save. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone Layout. making games, yeah, take so a note out of their, that one as well, absolutely. Huh? Take a note out of these gentlemen's book, cross save yeah. on everything. So your progress is transferred across, like your actual levels you play through are yeah. a, a different, so you can't transfer that part. But all the, uh, the blueprints you've unlocked and the formulas, they transfer across. Um, and there's even, if you link it with your PlayStation, you, uh, you can find some extra kind of weapons that you wouldn't be able to get on oh, the cool. mobile game right. by uh, linking them together. So 
That's, Buy more. And that's coming down the way? Did you that's say it's coming out that? in about two, three oh, weeks? We don't have an wrong. exact date yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're Dave. Oh, good. Cool. Hi, John. Hi. Nice Dave, John, John, whichever one of you is which. <laughs> who can even keep track? I don't know. Engineer. I'm Chris. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming on Showing Off Counter Spy. Congratulations so. on thank the release. Yeah. Big day for you guys. We're off to have a beer. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, a yeah. well earned beer. Well deserved. One or two. Maybe one or two. Uh, Danny, you and I should get one too. Just, you I have know. a bottle of Buckfast underneath my desk I brought back from the UK. Yeah, yeah. If you want. Where's yeah. your desk? Because if you have to stay here, we'll, we'll go. Yeah. They'll, yeah. Take they'll take care, care of that for you. They'll take my Bucky yeah. away from We'll you. have to deal with some real <laughs> drunken, angry game developers <laughs> in about four minutes, judging by what that stuff oh, is yeah. like. Oh, yeah, Buckfast gets you. I won't finish that. Thanks, Danny, <laughs> for your discretion and also co-hosting. No worries. Pleasure to be back. Uh, and thank you folks for tuning in and watching the lobby today. We're back next week at 2 p.m. with all sorts of PAX Prime prep, more new games and exciting stuff. Please come back and join us then. See you later. Bye, Mary. Bye. Don't mess up the gym shot. Shut up. You can do <laughs> it. All the cameras. Gym shot. This way, this way a bit more. This way. Yeah. The money. Great job. Great job.